What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here. Let's continue on with our tutorial series. Again, we're gonna start this section off with a theory video uh, so that I can keep the code explanations in the actual tutorial videos itself in the programming videos to a minimum. So in our previous video, we created uh, sequences. We finished off well, most of the sequence or most of the animations that we're going to use. And so in this next section, what we're going to do is actually add some controls into our games. So if you can imagine each of our units, I'm just going to write one unit here as an example, but each of our units has their own features, right? They have speed and all of these um, RPG related elements, so etc. And they also have a sequence attached to them. The, this sequence is, of course, where we're playing our animations. Each and every single unit that you have in your game, whether it's four, like what we're creating, or if you have more than that, that's totally fine. Each of those units goes into our manager. They go into the manager and they all get sorted into the unit list, right? As we have already covered this topic, if you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you go back and catch up with this particular one. So our units list is where we access all of our information for each and every single unit. What we're going to do in this next section is from this unit list, we are going to pick the first unit, but that doesn't mean at the very top, but what I mean is the first unit that hasn't had their turn yet, right? So first unit, uh, not finished their turn. Finished their turn. Okay, so that's that's what our unit list is going to look for. How do we do that? Well, we're going to write in a bit of code that will basically look for in each and every single unit, we're going to have a variable, which is basically turn finished. And so when a character attacks or defends or does any particular action, once their turn is finished, they are going to flip this variable, which is a Boolean, and they're going to flip it from false to true. The manager then does what it needs to do, going through the loop, checking to see if there are still units on the field, and then it goes back to the start of the turn, and then it finds, again, it finds the first unit whose turn finished is false, right? And so if a unit at i, remember we're going to use, so just to give you guys a heads up, we are going to use a for loop. So if units i dot turn finished, turn finished is false. All right, so if the unit that we're checking right now, if its turn finished variable is false, then we are going to set the global. We're going to store a global variable here, and we are going to set the global dot selected. We're going to take the global dot selected unit. We are going to set this variable, which is just going to hold a unit ID, and that will be. All right, so that's that's basically what we're going to do. How do we get the actual game to select the units and how do we get the units to, well, have their turn? Eventually, we're going to be adding a UI in. Right? We're going to have a UI system as well as an AI system take care of player as well as AI input depending on whose team the unit is on. But for now, what we're going to use is just keyboard inputs. The reason why we're going to use keyboard inputs is because for now we just want to make sure that the functionality itself works. So unlike what we had at the start, what we're going to do is with the manager itself, we are going to use the global key presses. Right? So global left mouse click, global right mouse click, etc, etc. We are not going to be controlling the actual objects directly. Um, 
this this has a couple of benefits for us. The first one is that the unit itself doesn't need to have essentially control code attached to it. So let's just say, for example, you have a spell in your game where you can take one unit and you can swap their teams, right? You can make an enemy an ally or adversely, you can have an enemy turn one of your friendly units into, well, basically turn them to their team, right? And so you don't want to have control codes or direct control over the units. Rather, you want all of the inputs, whether it's uh, from the player or from the NPC, to go through this manager instead. So all inputs goes through the manager. And basically, this allows us to make this game much more flexible and more fluid. It also keeps things neater, I, I, I would say. Um, but this is basically what we're going to do in this section, right? We're going to loop through our units list. We're going to find which unit has not finished their turn yet. And we are going to set that unit as the selected unit. It's then going to go into the manager, is then going to wait for input. And for now, we're just going to control everything, but it's going to wait for input. And then when this input is done, it then loops back to the top and then it selects um, the next unit that's done. At the same time, each unit needs to have their turn finished code um, implemented as well. Now, it just seems that we're just adding in a single variable. That's not the case. We also need to add in control code for the sequences. We've already added control code in for when an animation finishes, but what do we do when we have to start the animation? Well, in this keyboard press or whatever button we're going to use, we're going to tell this unit or the selected unit to play a sequence. In our case, our sequence will play the attack animation. Right, and in our attack code, we are going to flip our Boolean from true to false, or rather from false to true. Right, so that's basically what it's going to do. This section will be uh, about two, maybe three videos long. And so hopefully by the end of it, you guys will have a working sequence. Now, keep in mind that we're only going to be working with one sequence animation. That's going to be our attack animation. The reason for that is because the next section after this will actually be attack or HP and attack. So, you know, tying those two together, they go hand in hand. Um, and so we want to get at least the attack animation playing right from the start. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.